Okay, hello everyone. Today we have Mr. Paul Asiante with us. Um, just want to start with a brief introduction about Coach. Welcome, Coach. Thank you so much for taking our time for coming here and joining us. Uh, Coach has been coaching the Trinity squash and tennis team since 1994. He's the coach at Trinity College, Hartford, Connecticut. Coach has won multiple Coaches of the Year award. Um, more than that, he's also the winningest coach in the college sports history. He won, he took Trinity to 252 consecutive matches, which is the longest winning streak in any college sports history. And this uh, streak started in 1998. Uh, coach has also been part of the US, like prior to Trinity, he was the coach at the US Military Academy at West Point. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, he is coach from star players like Monica Sellers and the US tennis team, and also various like national and Olympic team. He currently is coaching, he's based in Hartford, Connecticut in the US and he's coaching the Trinity squash team and he is the current US national head coach. Welcome coach, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Moody. I'll start with giving you a brief purpose about the blog coach. Um, yes. So the reason for me to create this blog uh, on the Richards website is that I want to create a medium where I would be bringing in uh, people like you, masters and gurus who have, you know, who have specialization in their area of expertise throughout their life and this is a medium where you would be people like you would be sharing their life principles what have been driving you throughout the years and then these principles would be again used for people like me my age especially the youth and also people all age around the world who can learn from your stories and incorporate these principles in their daily life in a personal and professional capacity in order to lead a meaningful life that they can and make this world a better place, which is extremely important in today's time. So let's just right get into it, coach. So the first question I wanted to ask you, coach, was uh, we know that you've written a book called Run to the Roar. And I just wanted to understand what made you choose this title, Run to the Roar. And personally, I've read this book. I'm a big fan of this book. I always go back to this book when I'm confused about life. And you have spoken about journey being more important as important as a destination if not more which is a very important and a moving line so just wanted to talk to you about this for uh for brief yeah well we we wrote this book um thank you mooted and it's an honor to be here and it's interesting to live a purposeful life you have to first figure out what your purpose is yeah and and one of the things that i'm always amazed at is how many people are seeking happiness, but they don't know what it is that will make them happy. Yeah. And so we're many, most, are just spinning our wheels and living lives of quiet desperation. Yeah. So if you can get down to a purposeful life and what that would look like for you, that's the first step in beginning to get there. Yeah. Um, the book, Run to the Roar, has many themes, one of which is an apology you know, my three grown children, because I wasn't really there for them when they were growing up. And also learning how to manage fear. And that's where the title comes from. Um, my psychologist um, laughs at me all the time. And he says, Coach, you're the most conflict avoidant person I've ever met. And yet you lead people into conflict every, every weekend. How does, that, how does that work out? And so he told me a story. Um, and the story is about the fact, and this is true, that in Africa, lions hunt in packs. And they take with them the oldest male of, or oldest female of the pride. By this point, she's old and firm and cannot catch her own food. But she has a really deep roar. Yeah. And so what they do is they position this old lioness in the middle of the field, mm -hmm. facing the bush. The lionesses that she hunts with hide in the bush. Yeah. So that when she roars, the prey, mm -hmm run away from the roar to their death. Point being, if the prey went at what was frightening them, yeah. if they went at what they were worried about or concerned about, they would find out it wasn't as bad as they thought it was. They had a better chance fighting an old toothless lady than they did healthy lionesses. Mm -hmm. So the analogy there is always go at the problem. Always attack what you see as your biggest, your biggest challenge run to the roar and i could personally tell that too coach like as part of you know under your leadership you always used to encourage us to you know you used to see all of us running away from our fears and you used to always like you know tell us you have to run to your problems put us in 
all the challenge matches you have put us in, all the yeah. like you know, like situations that you have put in that that's extremely important, and yeah. which is like as you said, like it's run, you know, running to the road, like not running. Well, the rhetorical question you need to ask yourself every day is, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. What is the worst that can happen? Once you've come to grips with that, yeah, then it's not so bad. Exactly. And it almost never is. Definitely. Very moving. Thank you so much for sharing that, Coach. Sure. Uh, next thing is, uh, Coach, you have consistently performed at what you have been doing over the years, and which is very hard. Like, not a lot of people can perform at such a high level consistently. Like, people come there and people like come down very quickly. Just to stay there and be consistent, we know there's a major mental element to that. So, personally, for you, what do you think? How did you get to this level, like mentally? Or what did you do something different for you to stay consistent at that level? Anybody that's been able to stay at what we call the top, which I would, would suggest is not a very good measuring stick. Yeah. But for anybody to be uh, at the top of their trade for a long period of time, has the ability to analyze and make adjustments. It, what worked last year will not work this year. Yeah. You know, it just, it just doesn't. The world is constantly changing. The Buddhists are right. You know, the only thing you can count on in life is impermanence. Everything is constantly changing. Yeah. And if you want to stay ahead of the pack, you must constantly change as well. Yeah. Um, you know, your strategy, the, the place where you're going to recruit talent and, and how, how whatever discipline you're in, it becomes more sophisticated and different. You must constantly tweak and modify what you're doing if you want to stay ahead. Okay. Because if you don't improve, you deteriorate. If you're just trying to keep reproducing the template that you used last year, you'll fall behind. Definitely, that's, that's, that's a very important point. Like as the world is constantly changing, we also see so much tech, so much science coming in, constantly evolving. So in terms of that too, like one needs to keep evolving and you know, changing yeah. the mindset and keep- You, you have to have in business, they call it a rage to master. Yeah. You must have the fire all the time to grow and improve. Definitely, coach, definitely. That's a good point. Thank you for sharing. Again, coach, throughout your life, like we've noticed and you have shared with us in the practice, the four years I've been there, you've always involved yourself in sports related stuff. Your life has been, you've dedicated your life in sports. According to you, like we always come across terms like sportsman spirit. According to you, how would you define sportsmanship? Like what is sportsman spirit according to you? Well, I've, you know, I am, I'm the lucky one. Um, my purpose in life has been to try to help people grow and become better. Yeah. And the vehicle that I've used is sport. Yeah. And the reason I've chosen sport is because every day is a new scoreboard. Yeah. Every day you need to learn how to win, learn how to lose, learn how to adjust on the fly, re-strategize, do all of these things that are the same in the business world. And so to, to me, um, the sportsman spirit is pure to sport only. In the business world, every day is a meritocracy. Mm -hmm. Every day you must win. Yeah. You win at all cost. Mm -hmm. In sport, that's not the case. Yeah. In sport, there is an underlying issue and that is character. Mm -hmm. You must do things as well as you can in the proper way. Yeah. You must come back and battle your opponent or battle yourself if you're a runner or a swimmer. And at the end of it, do it in a way that shows class and dignity. Yeah. You know, winning with class is easy. Losing with class is much harder. Exactly. And these are the, these are the things that I've really tried to become a student of my whole life. And I'm a better coach today than I was a year ago because I also have a rage to master and I want to be better at honing my skills. Definitely. This brings me to the next question, Coach, where you just, you know, you were talking about failure and losing. In today's time, we, people like my age, especially and younger people, like we are scared to fail. Like people are not, they are not willing to fail. The thought of failing is just making them scared and making them also like not trying certain things where they know they're not good at. According to you, like how should one take failure? And then if one faces failure, how do you 
um, cope with failure and you know like overcome it in order to move forward failure is the playground to success you can only go so high as a result of learning from your mistakes mm -hmm. learning from what just happened yeah. and it's an interesting thing in our society in the name of love we parents will do anything to make sure our children don't fail exactly you know, we just we don't want to see them go through that pain well that's essential to the development of a person you have to let your children fail you have to let your child skin his knee you have to do those things and then you need to be there to help teach them how to embrace that failure and make it into something more positive yeah. in the business world especially at the beginning you can still fail yeah. you can still learn the as you climb to the top of the mountain while the view is better the fall is further so there the, the, the chance for opportunity for mistake becomes smaller but by then you've learned more and hopefully you won't make those mistakes i make mistakes every day of my life I'm, my mind is blown by how many mistakes i've already made today yeah. but i'm trying to learn and be better all the time yeah and uh you know this is one of the thing i as i coach ceos to encourage them to allow people to have an environment in which they can make calculated and intelligent risks and then teach them at that moment in time you know how to improve it's interesting you know i believe in the japanese philosophy which is that you cry and practice and you laugh in competition so in the workplace it's really a matter of making the day-to-day -day work more challenging Mm -hmm. So that when that young person is standing in front of a boardroom or making a presentation or whatever, they've already been through something that's much tougher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just think, Coach, like, you know, like our society, as we were talking about, you were also mentioning there needs to be a shift in mind where failure needs to be seen differently. But like how, like since day one, either like our parents protect us from not failing, you know, they mm -hmm. won't let us lose through in like open situations where one can fail or generally like everyone is like told that you know like if you fail you're going to be left behind you're not going to get this you're not going to get that which ends up making so much pressure on oneself and this is like the biggest driving factor for anxiety which is every other person my age or people older too like everyone's very anxious about things like the way they lead life normal day-to-day -day life is more of their day is being consumed by being anxious so mm -hmm. what would you say, like, what's, what, like, how should one deal with anxiety? Like, what's the shift that one needs to get, especially like people my age, so that we're not anxious, we can actually, you know? Uh, well, you got to learn to laugh at yourself. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at the screen of a person who for four years mm -hmm. was afraid of his shadow, right? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I love you, so that's not a criticism. But, you know, you can't rewrite history. You yeah. cannot change how you were raised. But there's a wonderful saying, which is that perfection is the enemy of the good. Yeah, yeah. If you try to be perfect, yeah. you will not be good. Yeah. You will not grow. You cannot, you cannot be perfect. You should not strive for it. You need to laugh at yourself, see the irony in the day, yeah. accept your humanity, give everything the best you can, get up, wipe yourself off, and start again. In life, you don't regret what you did. Yeah. In life, you regret what you didn't do. Exactly, exactly. Coach. People yeah. have to go out there and try mm -hmm. and yeah. take chances. Yeah. This is, you're, you're, you're 27 years old. Yeah. This cannot be a tightrope walk. Yeah. You got to be willing to go out there and fly, fall, pick yourself up and start again. Yeah. But we just, we, it's so against the grain, you know, I can't lose this job. There's a thousand people looking for my job and then how am I going to get another job? Well, then you know what? You're only going to become only so good yeah. at the job that you have. Definitely. And the other issue is, are you even happy doing it? Exactly. So many people are doing what they're doing without even realizing. It's just a oh, monotonous yeah. routine that people are following without even knowing if that's, you know, what yeah. they actually want, if that's their calling. Yeah, when I was the pro at the Princeton Club of New York, I'd get on a train to go into the city and I would be surrounded by so many people dressed in the finest of clothing. Yeah. Their heads were down. Life just looked bleak. 
and they were going to a job that maybe they didn't love, but they were trapped. You know, the one thing about being young, and that's what this blog is intended to do, you're not trapped at this age. Your yeah. responsibilities are to yourself and your career yeah. and your family. If you're not going to be able to take these chances at 50, 45, you can't. Now's the time to learn and grow. Exactly. The best thing that could happen to you in this job mm -hmm. is that e either you're hugely successful or at some point in time you say, you know what, this isn't what I want to do and redirect. Definitely. That's okay too. Yeah. That's okay too. Definitely. Yeah. Totally agree, coach. Now, a personal question for you in terms of your memory, like with time and Trinity. So, just want to understand when you got that winning streak year after year, year after year. Uh, team kept winning and which ended up with this longest streak that you ever had even in the entire college position this is a feel like no one has achieved only except like Trinity Squash which is amazing and it's very I feel you know proud to be a part of this family so I just want to understand when the streak was happening when over the years every year when team kept winning what was the sense of feeling did you think like every year when you were winning did you have this sense of feeling that there can be like a streak which can happen which can be like something that no sport has ever achieved or you were just going, you know, like every match that you were going in, you were just going point by point. And once you ended up achieving that longest streak, what was your feeling? Like, how did you uh, like comprehend that long streak? Well, you know, it's a funny thing, would it? I've never, I never did this for wins and losses. Yeah. Um, it was harder for the boys on the team because it felt bigger than them. But for me, I didn't come to Trinity to be a part of some historic streak. Yeah. It, to me, it was an annoyance. It took away our focus from our day-to-day -day job. Yeah. You know, when you go on a squash court, you don't have the clicker in your hand yeah. that controls the scoreboard. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else controls that. Definitely. That's a good metaphor. Don't worry about the score. Yeah. Just take care of the task at hand. Yeah. You know, if you spend all your time worrying about what your bonus is going to be this year, your performance will lessen. And so for us, we were just in the middle of a cool chapter, but it didn't define us. And it was something we look back on with pride, but it wasn't, it wasn't all that important. And you asked the question, interestingly, you said, um, did you know when the streak was over that you had done something special? And, and in fact, when the streak was over, what I realized is that we lost. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And it was the next day was time to get back up and get to work. Yeah, yeah. And start a new streak, whether it's going to be one match long or whatever. Yeah. But it was more just, it became more important to others than it became to ourselves. Yeah. And we just tried to get up every day and, and work hard. Excellent. Yeah, that's really nice. Good point, coach. The last question for today, coach, is um, we know like how over the years you have empowered so many people like myself personally, you have taught us so many basic things. You have, you know, you have give, you've given us courage to face this world, see failure very differently. Like personally, my experience at Trinity has made me a very different person in terms of how I deal with the life. I've had failures, I've seen things at those four years, which I never saw in my life. And those four years, again, like back and forth, you know, you always welcome all the players in your office. We talk to you every day, every morning, every after session, before session, and you always like guide us through life. It's not just sports, it's basically life. You're like a mentor to us in life. Sports is just like a small aspect to it. So considering all of that, what, what advice and what message would you have for people, youth in India, also around the world, underprivileged, from underprivileged community and also not from underprivileged, like for everyone, what message would you give to the youth in order to lead a meaningful life? What is something that they can start doing from today to make this shift happen? You know, it's funny. My father was my hero, but there was nothing very extraordinary about my father. Yeah. But he was a gentle soul. And when he left, I realized that in his every day, he just made things a little better for the people around him. Yeah. That's, our, that's our obligation as a society. Yeah. Now, it's not right for me to tell you how to live your life. 
But I do believe that life is much more meaningful if we can pay attention to the relationships of those around us and recognize that every day we're adding another strand to the spider web of connectedness where we can make the world or we can make a small piece of the world just a little better by being kind and gentle to people around us. We're, we're in this, we're only renting space. We're not going to be here very long yeah. in the big history of the world. So we have an obligation while we're here yeah. to try to make the little corner that we occupy better. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's a matter of, I used to think that a lot of money or, you know, power or whatever those things are that drive us. It's just good acts. When you do something nice, yeah. like the wind, it just keeps blowing forward. Yeah. Paying it forward is our purpose in life. Yeah. It's my purpose in life. Yeah. And I can't think of a more meaningful and fulfilling thing. So if you are a, an underprivileged person anywhere in the world, and, and you know, you're in India, and life is hard, and you're just trying to get through the day, you can still share and spend and spread a little love in your world. Yeah, amazing. And uh, yeah. that's the whole point of this. Yeah, yeah. The whole point of this. So I think it's about, could you imagine if every person in the world today got up and said, I'm just going to make sure someone else smiles today. Yeah, yeah. You know, Maybe. that would be, we could, that would be amazing what we could do in one day in the world. Definitely. And, uh, Right now, we're so full of anger and hatred and lies and people are using everything for, for political reasons and just take care of each other. Yeah, yeah. That's and, you know, in terms of what I've been a part of at Trinity, there is no one luckier than me because every day I got to have the Mudapants of uh, the world in my office every morning and the Jake Lords and the and we'll we'll be connected forever so thank you for taking the time to do this mood it's been an honor no coach thank you so much for being a part of this and being the first person to do this um this people like you are definitely you know like are the driving factors driving voices which who we can look up to listen to and you know make some changes in our life because you're the people who have seen the life you know like so we have to learn from you so definitely thank you so much for coming here and pleasure see you soon coach see you soon buddy thanks